All right. Too slow to die, Hammer. Well, no, we got caught. All right. This is the last commission. I decided to start them already. So that we can just go straight into the event. Upon the game. There were any Nazuma today. And I had my um I used to have my commission set up in Inazuma for the longest time. Quit following. Um You know, because I needed to do stuff, get achievements and shit like that. Too slow. And then the the me. second that I could, I said, no more. Let me leave. And I have not been to Inazuma again since. Unless, of course, I have commissions here because I put them to anywhere. Add Astra. Thank you for. Add Astra. Let's put all our people back in their usual spots. And now we can pretty much go straight to the games, which is what I wanted. Uh, so we're just gonna... I don't actually know where exactly it is. It's probably in the... I think it's in Port Ormos, actually. Let's just go over here real quick. Uh, I am going to quick start the event. Because the things you need to do before you start it are the story quest that I just finished. The Sumeru interlude uh, quest. And then you also need to do... T technically, you should do all Haytham story quests, but I'm not going to do that. Because... Uh, Yeah, I don't- I don't care. <laughs> I'm quick starting it. Primon's heard lots of people talking about this academia extravaganza thing earlier. Wonder what that is? Maybe there'll be fun things to do there. Let's go to the academia and have a look for ourselves! We'll have a heckin' fun time. Alrighty. Where's... Let's go to quest. Thank you. I am completely wrong. What the heck was I reading that said Port Almost then? And a dingus brain do I have. Too slow. Huh. I don't even use the stairs. I'm just like, it's down here? Alright. Jumps half the staircase. It's not even a staircase. It's a ramp. In Mondstadt, we don't need stairs. In Sumeru, we don't need ramps. That's life. Hello? I'm like around it. <laughs> A moment, if you would. Are you two the famous traveler and Paimon by any chance? I suppose so. We sure are! And who are you? My name is Wikos, a member of the Academia Extravaganza Planning Committee. Have you two heard of this festival? Uh, a couple of days ago where I, you know, speed ran through a story quest to try and get here, but yeah. Yep, and that's exactly why we're here. Is that so? Looks like our advertising is working. Since you're both interested, would you mind if I gave you a brief explanation of the event? 
So, the Academia Extravaganza is a grand event run by the Academia with a long and storied history. To be precise, it can be divided into the Wisdom Gala and the Inter Darshan Championship. You say that like I'm supposed to know what those mean. The gala is held annually. During this time, all six Darshans will set up booths throughout the city and host guests to showcase the most fascinating aspects of their school and thus increase their influence. On the other hand, the championship is held once every four years. Each Darshan will send a representative to vie for the position of Grand Champion. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you have to understand that, like, if you come into, just imagine you're trying to get, like, a bachelor's degree or something. If you come in, like, at the wrong time, you could just completely miss the championship entirely. <laughs> God forbid you're trying to get your associates. And, like, in between those four years, you ain't ever seen a championship ever. This year. The gala is being held alongside the championship, so the mood in the city is, as they say, at an unprecedented fever pitch. Got it! Cool! Thanks a bunch for the detailed explanation! You didn't really tell me what the event is about, though. <laughs> You're most welcome. Answering questions regarding the academia extravaganza is my job. And... I actually do have something I would like to ask the two of you. Of fucking course he does. Huh? Need our help with something? Everyone does! Well, let me begin by saying that this year's Academia Extravaganza is of utmost importance to us. Well, I would presume so, since you're checking two events together. Lesser Lord Kusanali and the Sages came up with a plan for the Academia to recruit talented people from the desert starting next year. As such, we've invited a great number of desert dwellers to take part in this festival, so they can hopefully experience the Academia's atmosphere ahead of time. I've heard that the two of you are famous across both the rainforest and desert. With your participation, especially in the Inter Darshan Championship, more people will definitely come to appreciate the festival. I don't go here. Or do you mean you want us to join a Darshan? Ugh, but then we would have to deal with exams and essays and stuff like that. Please, I already deal with that enough. I don't want to... Don't put me back here. <laughs> no need to worry. The championship participants have already been selected. I mean to invite the two of you as guest commentators. Your job will be to observe and record every part of the competition. Okay, that I can handle. There's no pressure. Just follow each match and enjoy the festival. Aside from that, we'll also prepare some compensation for your efforts. We won't have you working for free. Okay, well, if I'm getting paid, I'll take it. That kind of sounds like a sweet deal. What do you think? You can head over to the festival venue later. An organizer there will introduce each participant. <laughs> I've already seen the memes. I I know who the participants are. I'm gonna have a laugh. I'm gonna have a fucking laugh today. I need it though. Some of them even might be people you recognize. Oh, I'll some? Leave it at that for now. Only some. Mm hmm. Sure. <laughs> There's one in particular. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a good laugh about it today. Especially after the turmoil my heart went through in that last story quest. So, how about it? Would you like to take this commission? Well, you are paying me. Wow, having fun while getting paid? This sounds awesome! The main event venue is at the outskirts of the Citadel of Regzar, and the organizer you're looking for is Karina. Tell her the situation and she'll get you set up. The championship is going to begin soon. I wish you a good experience serving as commentators. If you have any doubts, come find me anytime. Alrighty, off we go! Huzzah! How long is it gonna take me to finish this quest? The world may never know. 
Alright, where am I going? Oh, like this way. Squall and Fury. Oh! Well, I'm just a blind bitch, ain't I? <laughs> I'm like, God, I hope it's somewhere I can find, and then it's like... Yeah. Welcome, one and all, to the Academia Extravaganza! Woo woo. Now then, allow me to reveal the prizes for this iteration of the Interdarshan Championship. Fabulous monetary rewards, research funds, a limited edition Genius Invocation TCG card, <laughs> and the right to wear the Diadem of Knowledge! I believe that I need not elaborate as to how this is a symbol of great honor. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you'll get money, you'll get funds for your research, and you're all scholars, so that's important. You'll get to wear this diadem of knowledge, which we're not even going to explain why that's important, so you know it's pertinent. And then just a, a, a fucking TCG card. <laughs> so guess who's gonna show up? She should be Karina, right? Oh, God. Looks like she's in the middle of something. Let's wait till she's less busy, then go introduce ourselves. The Diadem of Knowledge. What a perfect work of art. <sighs> Every time I see it, I feel like I'm losing myself in its beauty. The one who proves fit to wear it must be a rare genius indeed. I believe that most of you have already seen the Diadem of Knowledge or have heard tales about it. Me in the back, like, what? Twenty years ago, a researcher named Sachin bought it for a large sum of mora before donating it to the Academia. The generous championship prizes are also sourced from his sponsorship. Before we begin, allow me to express our gratitude to this researcher, oh. who cannot be with us right now. Oh no. That doesn't bode well. <laughs> When the string, when the screen starts glitching, then the chromatic apparition just really starts showing up. You know shit's going down. <laughs> oh god, no! Please don't tell me that. Like I don't know, the inlaid gem is some kind of form of canned knowledge or something. I don't, I don't need that kind of shit today. I came here for fun little happy games. All right. Now we're glitching. Oh no, the film! Things can only get worse. We got an old timey film overlay and a fucking black and white ghost. This isn't gonna go well. Things can only go from bad to worse. Sir? Human nature begets conflict, and conflict begets ruin. From the beginning. The seeds of wickedness have been. He reminds me of the Grand Sage. Hey, stop spitting out! Or maybe that's just because we can only afford so many NPC models. <laughs> Paimon called out to you, but you didn't respond. You okay? Did you stay up late without telling Paimon? Um. I mean, to be fair, I did go to bed at like. 4.30 in the morning, so you know, uh... <laughs> Alright. I'm sure we're all more than ready for the championship to begin. I hope she didn't say any pertinent information whatsoever. Now then, let's invite our six Darshan representatives to the stage. <gasps> our contestants are... Yes! Yes! <laughs> Representing Amorta, Tainari! <laughs> they all get a fucking intro style card. <laughs> there he is. Representing Spontamod, Sino! Who's probably literally only here for the TCG card. <laughs> Representing Ratawahist, Layla. 
Oh god. This shit's funny. Representing Herobitot! Fire's on! There he be! Representing Kasharawar! Kabe! Ahem! It's the architect boy! <laughs> And for Bahumana! Huh? Is Bahumana's representative not here yet? <laughs> he said, I'm gonna get here on my own fucking time. <laughs> These introductions are pointless. There he is! Let's just get this over with. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love him. Uh, wait a sec. Why is he Bahumana's representative? Uh, well, you see, Paimon, his aunt enrolled him in some classes. Finally, our final contestant is Bahumana's representative, Hat Guy! <laughs> yep, that's him! That's the love of my life! Hack guy! Bitch, I'm hack guy. Let's fucking go. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, so that's hack guy. I think I've seen him before. Oh, fuck. Uh, you know who he is? Yeah, didn't you hear him? He's hack guy. <laughs> I've heard that he's a researcher from a different country who nominally belongs to Vahumana. Word is that he's written a lot of political analyses. What a legend. His manner of speech hasn't made him popular amongst most other Vahumana researchers. Oh, wow, his I wouldn't comings guess. and goings are quite irregular, so he doesn't interact with others much. Wow, he's got a bit of a shit attitude and he doesn't like to be around other people? I never knew that! <laughs> God, I love- Everyone's just looking at him like- Excuse me? Dude? <laughs> oh, I'm got I'm, I'm already having a blast. Aside from his more controversial aspects, his perspectives are considered quite incisive. Bahumana has seen a dearth of new talent lately, and some of its existing ones are not currently at the Academia, so I suspect he might have been their only option. <laughs> he got fucking selected by default. <laughs> I don't even- does he even want to be here? Or was it a matter of like... They were like, damn, our most insightful fucking students aren't even here right now. And they just turned their heads and looked over and went... Fuck. Hack guy really do be our best option. <laughs> oh my god. It's just kinda weird. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy who would participate in competitions like this one. Oh, but I'm glad he is. Now that we have our six contestants, the championship will soon begin. Who will triumph this time around? Hold on to your hats, because we're all on this ride together! Oh my god... Huh, we really do know a lot of the contestants! Come on, we know all of them! Granted, I don't think story-wise we've actually met Farzan yet, but we did, like, briefly meet Kabe. We had the entire, um... 
fungi event with, uh, with Lila? Layla? I always forget. Uh, Sino and Tanari we know very well, and, um, we- we know Riku! We- we fucking know him! <laughs> oh, right! We're guest commentators, aren't we? So figuring out everyone's reasons for participating is in our job description! Alright, time to get up on y'all's business. Let's go ask them when we go say hi! Especially him! Paimon still thinks it's weird that he's here. I think it's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, this is a little awkward. <laughs> also, where did he go? What? Oh. Hold on. He's he he decided to leave everybody. Okay, there he is. <laughs> of course, he's on his fucking own because that's what he does. What we'll do- we'll talk to him last. Hold on. Hey, boys! We meet again, you two. I missed you guys! It hasn't been that long. It was like- I saw them last time in, like, fucking Windbloom, but still, that feels like forever ago. Hey, Tainori! We came here to check out this extravaganza event, and then they invited us to be guest commentators! Is that so? I heard that there would be guest commentators recording the proceedings with cameras, but <laughs> I didn't expect they'd be you two. It's a pleasant surprise that you're visiting Sumeru again while I'm still on leave. When everything comes together perfectly like this, I call it the biryani factor. Because it's always rice to meet stew again. the entire event I'm going to die he's gonna kill me with laughter that was a terrible joke I love it <laughs> that was the worst <laughs> I'm a giggly bitch with a terrible sense of humor <laughs> you're killing him so I know you're killing him. You're killing your husband. <laughs> you're killing me with jokes. So, Tainari, you're representing Amurta, and Sino is representing Spontamod. But haven't you both already graduated? Can alumni also take part in a competition? I had wondered the same thing. When I was told the news, I was actually more shocked than you are now. I later found out that anyone who has been a part of a particular darshan has the right to participate. Graduation status has no effect. Oh, okay. Because I was also wondering why Kava was here, because I... I'm not, you know, I'm not sure if he's graduating or not. I feel like he has. Um, and particularly Faruzan, because... I'm pretty sure she acts more like a mentor. Rather than, um... An actual student. So. I don't know. And then you have a. Uh, you got Layla who's like actually a student. And then you have Riku. Who's just like. Honorary we couldn't pick anybody else. So that's a rule huh. There are some restrictions though. For example. Sages cannot participate. Any given person can only participate in one instance of the championship, and so on. Hmm, okay. That's right. Also, there are two methods by which the Darshan representatives are chosen. One is self-nomination, and the other is to be recommended by over half of one's Darshan. You must have been a case of the latter, Tainari. I heard that quite a few of your juniors petitioned for your candidacy. Sometimes I wish I could clap a few of them over the head and tell them to spend that time on studying instead. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking mood. Well, you can, but after some consideration, I realize this could be a good opportunity for me. 
Next month, we're having a public lecture on ecology at Gandharvaville. If I participate in this event, I might be able to utilize its popularity to promote the lecture. I love how he was like, ah, uh, these dingus juniors out here caring more about who's gonna be picked for this event than doing their goddamn studying. And then rather than, like, rejecting the offer, he's like, wait a moment. I can use this to my advantage. I have a lecture to promote. <laughs> I... I love these bitches so much. God damn. I'm not that concerned about becoming the champion. Unlike someone here. I'm telling you, he's in it for the card. He's in it for the fucking card. Yes. I'm using the last of my leave for this. When I heard that a limited edition Genius Invocation <laughs> TCG card was one of the prizes, I signed myself what did up. I fucking say? <laughs> what did I fucking say? The bitch is just in it for the card. <laughs> this year's card is a rare one indeed. It would be a shame if I missed out on it. This is, this man's is like, hey, we, uh, Kale, are you going? Are you going to Mondstadt this year for Windbloom? We're coming with you. Why? I, uh, you know, I just I want to protect you. Definitely not wanting to just go off for my own reasons to take a photo of Devalin so I can hand it to Calx so that I can get a cool uh one of a kind TCG backing card. Definitely not that one. And then now the second they said TCG card, I'm like, all right, that's why he's here. <laughs> this man, this man cares about like a whole fucking two things. <laughs> One is Tanari. No, I'm a liar. He cares about three things. One's Tanari, one's Kale, and the other one's fucking TCG. <laughs> Oh my god. Wait, is this some kind of super powerful card? Jesus Christ. No, it's a very common one. But it has a holographic layer. Oh, god. <laughs> the holographic foil card, I see. A man of culture. <laughs> so I know you're killing me. Uh, so. What's the point? It has a hollow fell body, you dickus. It's very cool. <laughs> God damn it. I uh, Paimon meant apart from being very cool. <laughs> what more do you need? That is reason enough. I shall do my all to emerge victorious and add it to my deck. Oh my god. This is phenomenal. As someone who doesn't play cards much, I can't quite relate. But it isn't surprising that everyone has their own reasons for taking part in the tournament. Fair enough. Alright, let's go find someone else to question. Yeah, let's find someone else who's not gonna make me fucking die from laughter. Jesus Christ, Sino. Holy fuck. Alright, how y'all doing? Good Christ. Hello. Huh? Oh, it's you. Why are you here? I'm a fucking uh, guest announcer. Sorry, I'm still recovering from Sino. <laughs> oh God. We're your especially invited guest commentators. Our job is to record what happens during the competition. Is that so? In that case, I'll have to trouble you to catch the moment of my triumph on camera. You're lucky I have one. Remember to shoot from behind at a lower angle. You know. To capture a senior's class. Yeah, we haven't actually met her in the th Okay. It, interesting. Farazon. 
The researcher from a hundred years prior is a household name in Har- I'm not gonna- I can't pronounce these fucking Darshans. I- My brain just can't. But she is better known in Sumeru at large for her works and mechanics. Once she was trapped within a strange ruin and only escaped after much peril. Yet a century had passed for the world she emerged to. And it was no longer the place she remembered. Whether it be due to academic disagreements or the passage of time, she has quite a few things to say about the current state of the academia, and is not afraid to put her sharp tongue to use in commentating about other researchers. However, she can be quite easy to talk to. So long as you call her Madam, that is. What a legend. Don't get ahead of yourself now. Victory will obviously be mine. You're far too young to even consider challenging me. Kasharwar or Ratawahist, you're all children as far as I'm concerned. To be fair, a lot of people are children as far as she's concerned. She's over a hundred. <laughs> In fact, I think the only people here who are younger than her are the Traveler and Riku. I mean, older than her. I don't know. <laughs> Like, there's a whole two people here who out- who out-age you, Farzan. Whether you know it or not. Uh, actually, I was going to ask, uh, how do you know me, Madam Farzan? Huh? You don't remember? I sometimes see you in the library at night. You even waved at me! Uh, the night shenanigans. Uh, what? I don't remember doing that at all. It's okay, Layla. We love you every day. <laughs> huh. How strange. However, this is not the time for curiosity. I am Farozan, a household name in Haravatat. You are Layla from Ertawahist, I presume? I yes. Good. Then we are officially introduced. See? Simple as that. I like respectful ones, by the way. Would you like to join my research group? Oh, Jesus, get a personal space, Madam Faruzan! Madam Faruzan, I'm quite sure this counts as poaching. Let's dial things down. <laughs> oh, God. I know, but it's been tough getting people these days, and research funding has been hard to secure. But once I win this tournament, it'll be a different story. So you're just here to increase the amount of funding you're getting? Like everyone's here for a different reason, Paimon. We are also technically here for monetary value. <laughs> well, not just that. What, are you curious about my reasons for participating in this event? Well, I mean, I am an announcer. I'd, I'd like to know. Well, I suppose that's to be expected. You are our guest commentators, after all. There's been an influx of newly enrolled students, and they will be paying close attention to this competition. If I do win, I'm certain that there will be no lack of students knocking upon my door. Moreover, research resources will be made available to the victor, so that will nix my funding issues. Therefore, my two juniors, I do apologize, but I fully intend to emerge triumphant. She out here with the Hatsune Miku world is mine mentality. <laughs> uh, I'll do my best as well. At least I don't plan to lose too badly. Layla, I love you. Honestly, she's just out here with like the best fucking... Like, like the best attitude. Like even with Twirly Whirly, she was like, You know what, bud? Let's just try our best. Win or lose, we're here to have fun. And I'm like, you know what? You fucking go. So, why are you here, Layla? I don't know why, but a lot of people recommended me. I didn't sign up myself. I just woke up to find my name on the announcement board. That sounds like what happened to Dainari. Him too? <laughs> oh, I'm... I'm really nervous. I've been so worried about disappointment. Pointing everyone that I've been losing sleep. Oh no, we're losing her. 
Stress not, young one. We must all experience failure to grow and mature. But Madam Fireson, I don't want to fail. <laughs> I could just see the very tip of his hat <laughs> behind the fucking post. <laughs> it's like he's back there. Don't forget it. Oh, seriously? Everyone has such nice reasons for joining. Oh, Kava. Must I say? I mean, if it's painful, then no. Yes, you do! We gotta record it! Um, well, you know, right? I want to buy some property. Oh, that's. yeah. He. he. he's also here. So, Tainari is here because he got uh, nominated and he wants to promote his lecture. Sino wants a TCG card because it's cool. Uh, Farzan wants research funding. Layla doesn't even... She just got nominated. She didn't even... You know. Um, and Kava wants the money so he can get his own house. All... Good reasons, honestly. Oh, that's right. You want to move out of Alhaven? Uh, uh, what? I'll hate them. <laughs> what about him? This has nothing to do with him. Paimon, you fucking dingus! Everybody already knows, but we're just let let him let him let him pretend that no one knows. Okay, let him let him live in his delusion. she was talking about. <sighs> Paimon, we can't fucking take you anywhere. So, you want to use the grand prize to buy a place, right? Correct. Also, my father took part in the Interdarshan Championship when I was young, but he didn't win. Once I do, the right to wear that diadem will be mine. In a way, I'll be helping my father fulfill a dream of his. Well, the tragic backstory is starting early, ain't it? That's not a bad reason at all. You have ambition, youngster. Although your chances with me here aren't great, I believe your father would be most proud if the diadem of knowledge were bestowed upon you. Not that he'll have the chance to celebrate. My father passed away many years ago. They say he ran into quicksand while traveling in the desert. Oh, <sighs> for you to have experienced such a thing. That must have been tough for you. Kava, do you... Do you need a hug? I think Kava needs a hug. It's all in the past now, and life goes on, doesn't it? Let's change topics. I don't want to bring the mood down. Nah, don't worry, buddy. I bring the mood down all the fucking time. Let's all go. Right. <laughs> Earlier, you said that you want to use the prize Mora to purchase a home. Where do you live now? Do you live alone? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, uh, goodbye. Uh, well... <laughs> yeah, talk your way out of that one, Kava. Hmm. I also heard you mention I'll hate them just a moment ago. Isn't he also from Haravatat? Are you two hiding something from me? Talk it. I. You know what? I'm gonna go see Riku. Um, have fun talking your way out of this one, Kava. <laughs> Uh, no, of course not. Why would you think that? <laughs> Have a fun conversation. Hi, definitely not involved either. We're gonna go interview other contestants now. Bye. <laughs> We're just gonna leave Kava to suffer. Sorry, Bucko. You gotta navigate this conversation on your own. I ain't helping for shit. <laughs> Paimon incited chaos and we booked it. <laughs> well, this is awkward. Um, so, uh, what? Uh, what are you. Good way to start a conversation, Paimon. Very articulate of you. Just call me Hat Guy. That's the name I use in Vahumana. 
Don Sombrero it is then. <laughs> I'm actually gonna call him that this whole fucking time. Oh my god. That sounds like a nickname, not a real name. Well, you see, Paimon, I gave him a real name, but, you know... It... Hacka! So I can't go by a simple, ordinary name? Fine! Suit yourself! Alright then, Hackguy! Why are you taking part in the Inter-Darshan Championship? We're specially invited guest commentators, so play nice and answer our questions. I mean, he'll probably answer the questions, but I... That not mean he's gonna play nice about it, just gonna say. You could be Matra for all I care. So what if I don't answer you? What then? What did I fucking tell you? Uh, you! <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this much. I have an agreement with someone not to reveal my motives. I love how I'm just standing here and in my brain I'm like, Did, did your aunt make you? Didn't the Hita just tell you to do it? <laughs> You're not plotting something in secret, are you? Well, it's hard to say. Why don't you take a guess? Ugh, Paimon's had it with you. Paimon always fucking has it with him. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, be that way. Then we won't ask you why you're participating. Instead, uh, why did you join Bahumana? His aunt made him. You two sure like to poke your noses where they don't belong. If I don't say anything, are you going to annoy me to death? Uh, with Paimon here? Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> I heard that the Vahumana researcher named Akaba was researching the Tatarasuna incident, so I wrote a few essays to refute his points. Later, when I was bored, I wrote some commentary on societal issues in Inazuma. I didn't expect Vahumana to consider me as one of them. <laughs> Someone even invited me to a lecture or whatever. Aw, oh, look at him go. Inadvertently helping. <laughs> By particularly writing papers that say, uh, you fucking dingnesses, you were wrong. <laughs> From start to finish, it was just the wishful thinking of idiots. A misunderstanding. There's your answer. Simple. He literally just wrote papers saying, you dingnesses, you dumbasses, you were wrong. Here's, here's, here's the real shit. And why did he do it? Because he was bored. And then they looked at that and went, Damn, he's calling us an idiot. What a genius! Bring him to the Darshan! <laughs> you know when you inadvertently become just an amazing fucking scholar? Alright. But when Lesser Lord Kusanali heard about this, she went out of her way to get me registered in Vahumana. <laughs> She used the name Hat Guy. What did I fucking say? I knew it was her. <laughs> it really was his aunt. Just like, oh wow, the scholars are really taking interest in you. Okay, time for school. <laughs> oh, god damn it, Nahida. Enough chit chat. You're better off wasting your time with the other contestants. Oh, don't worry, hon. I already talked to all of them. I... <laughs> I specifically waited to talk to you. Someone's about to get very unlucky. Wanna guess who? Uh, I guess I'll bring out the game board. Didn't know we were playing Guess Who up in this bitch. How is anyone supposed to relax with you around? Me raises my hand. <laughs> <sighs> We've got to stay alert and keep a close eye on him. Paimon, he's like two feet in front of us. He can hear you. Looks like Karina's got a moment now. Let's go chat with her. But... It him. 
Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold, hold up. Um, hold up. I'll get it. Uh, Fires on. You're, you're not in the... In the shot. In the... Okay, good enough. Phenomenal. Sorry. D didn't mean to do that. Uh... Where... Lonely! Ah, you must be the guest commentators Vikas invited. I've heard about you. You know, I have to wonder, because it, it sounds like we're the only commentators here. A as far as I've been able to see. What if I said no? J what, what if I didn't show up? <laughs> I saw you two having quite the lively conversation, so I thought it would be best to wait. Are you two free right now? Yeah, I was having a wonderful conversation. I was laughing my ass off with Sino. We were... We forced Kava into a conversation that he's gonna have to dig himself out of, and, uh... You know, the usual, just Riku not answering people's questions and generally being offish and slightly insulting. So, you know, everything's normal as usual. <laughs> we were actually looking for you, too. Excellent. Then please allow me to explain your job responsibilities in detail. First, please take these two things. The first item is a custom camera from the Academia. Please use it to record the competition as it unfolds. The second is an event-specific locator that will flag all participants' locations. It will also sound when one of them completes an objective. The, the technology in this world amazes me, honestly. Because sometimes it's like, here's like one of the first ever iterations of a camera. You know, has to be on a stand, has two lenses, the viewfinder's probably on the top, and you gotta like, you know, look into it with the thing in the mirror. Very, very old, like, film camera. And then they'll also just hand you, like, here's a GPS that we've attached to each of the contestants that's gonna keep track of not only their location, but is also, like, hooked up to an app that'll let you know when they finish an objective. So, simultaneously, we have technology of, like, early, like... Oh, God, I forgot what in the... I forgot it when exactly the year was for the camera, but, like, the early, like, one of first iterations of film photography, and then, like, literally the equivalent of a smartphone with a GPS app on it. <laughs> oh, no! The lawnmower! Absconded! Thank you. <laughs> but the technology just baffles me. Wow! What a convenient little thing! Maybe too convenient. Aside from you two, there are two other commentators. However, they will remain by the commentators area Aye. and will not be following the contestants in real time. Hey! Nilo and Arhatham are here! <laughs> I was wondering when Arhatham was gonna show up, because he's... He's on the fucking banner cover for the event. <laughs> And also Kava's here. Speaking of which, you probably know them. I'll hate them and Nilu. Lawnmower's coming back. Oh, it's them! We have to go over and say hi later. Well, don't let me keep you unless you have any questions for me. Uh yeah, the 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 vision. Hmm? Why do you ask? Uh you know, no reason. I was just having a half Flashback half hallucination. Really? I didn't see any such person. Could I ask when you saw him? Um Yeah, in a in a film grained overlay black and white flashback. Strange. I was on stage the entire time and I didn't see anyone come up. Paimon didn't see anyone either. But what about my film grain black and white flashback? 
<laughs> Perhaps you're mistaken. However, if you have any leads on that matter, you can talk to me at any time. <gasps> hey, traveler. Paimon. Dia! Cannon! Ah! Everybody's fucking here! I love how the guy at the beginning was like, Hey, you might know a couple of people. Just here and there. And I'm like, bitch, everybody's here. <laughs> What's good? Ah, so they're two friends of yours. In that case, I'll take my leave. May you all have a wonderful time during the extravaganza. The Academia sent us both invitations, so Dia suggested that we come together. The lawnmower? Candace, the lawnmower! <laughs> the villagers were also encouraging me to travel outside the village. I couldn't find it in myself to turn them down. We're here now, so no point dwelling on that. Even though this extravaganza isn't a holiday or anything, it's still a big deal here in Sumeru. Merchants from all over will set up shop. There'll be tons of stuff to eat, use, and wear, more than you can count. I'm already set on helping you buy two new outfits. I mean, who wears the same thing at work and home anyway? Me who's... Home is my work. Uh. <laughs> I got the lot more! Every time. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <sighs> Just being able to relax and wander the streets freely has already made my day. So, Traveler, Paimon, you two want to come with? Uh, apologies, Dia. I'm trapped by societal convention. I'm getting paid. <laughs> uh, we'd love to, but we've got work to do right now. I'm getting paid. Aw, oh, that's a shame. Let's hang out together when you're free then. Sure. In that case, Candace and I'll head out first. Good clothing and fabrics are very much in demand. If you snooze, you lose. Oh, right. We should also get some accessories. No need to rush. I think we'll have a better time if we take things slow. See you two later. Feel free to come find us whenever you have the time. I'm glad they're here. Hyman didn't think that Candace and Dia would come. Hanging out with them sounds like a great time. Still, looks like the competition's starting soon. Let's go over to where Alhatham is and see what's going on. Uh, scores? Fucking competition hasn't even started. Yeah, no shit. Alright. I got a funky do. Uh. Oh, uh, yeah, this shit. Um. Oh. Oh, yeah, I'm a drum. My ticket. Yeah, you know, I haven't gone in here in a while. This is literally a fucking GPS. This is like a whole ass digital display GPS. The technology in this place confuses me. To no end. There's also an event. Why is there an event? Treasure hoard. Tre treasure hoarders. Can they not see that I am busy? I am gone. Ye wrong bucks. The wrong test subject. Bunch of dinguses. Okay. I need to get more water. So we are going to take a break. And I will be back in like uh, two minutes. I also gotta wait for a lawnmower. <laughs> Relax. 
relax. <laughs>
Hey. <clears throat> I will now announce the rules for the first round of the competition. Please listen carefully. During the opening ceremony, Academia staff released several cages of butterflies, and many of them are now fluttering within Sumeru City. Amongst these butterflies, three of them will be special swift flies. They have a different appearance and also fly a little faster. What is this, fucking Hogwarts? You gonna fly, catch the fucking, uh... I don't know shit about Hogwarts. I don't know what the thing's called. Your objective this round is to find a swift fly and bring it to me. Three points will be awarded to the first participant to return, two to the second, and one point to the third. That is all for the first round. Should you require clarification on anything, please ask any of the other staff. Oh, Hatham's all business all the time, huh? Hmm. That said, how did he get picked to be a commentator? Paimon's kinda curious. Well, I mean, he's the fucking, uh, scribe and the current acting Grand Sage. I... I think he has the qualifications. <laughs> Finding three specific butterflies in a place as large as Sumeru City sounds rather improbable. Hmm, if these swift flies behave anything like regular butterflies... I'm off. It will take some time to search every corner of Sumeru City. Huh? You're going just like that? He's... He's the General Mahamatra, and the man knows how to do things efficiently. He's getting moving. A champion moving. walks the road to victory. He really wants that TCG card. <laughs> <laughs> My dear Kasharawar Jr., I have a plan. How about some cooperation between you and me? Fuck, she's making teams and shit. Cooperation? She's making teams. Looks like everyone's got their own plans for this, Tuffy. We're supposed to go on stage next, right? Uh, let's wait and see everyone's reactions first. Huh? Wait a minute. Look, he seems to be observing the other contestants just like we are. Yeah, Paimon. He done. He tends to fucking do that. <laughs> Hi. We were right not to let our guard down. He's. Paimon, he's in a competition. And he's watching to see what the other competition does. That... That's perfectly justifiable. <laughs> she takes every fucking opportunity to just... Get on his ass. Leave him alone for two seconds. Previously. Huh? You mean... It's time for them to shine. It looks like Farazan and Kave have some secret plan. Oh, hello there. Madam Faruzan and I are discussing how... Shh! Hush now! The walls have ears around here. We should keep it a secret for now. But you'll find out what we have in store soon enough. Come now, let's go. Before the others act. All right, there's no time to lose. We're off to make our preparations. See you later. Okay, bye-bye. Hmm. This is basically <gasps> what I'll need. Do you Hello. think you'll have any difficulties? I have most of the reagents with me, and I can buy the rest. I didn't know she was here. <gasps> I love this. Literally fucking everybody's here. I love this. Kale, you're here too. But I love how it was like, oh, I'll hate them and Nilu or your other commentators. You should probably talk to them. And we're like, okay. And then immediately things start happening and I have not spoken to them and they're just sitting. 
<laughs> like five feet to the side. <laughs> um, Kanari, you have a master plan ready? My hypothesis is that the Swift Fly's morphological variations won't significantly affect their fundamental nature. So I'm planning on using this to lure them out. Of course, I could be wrong. Every mutation opens the door to new possibilities, especially when they are artificially introduced. The man just heard the word butterflies and went, All right, bitch, I know butterfly behavioral patterns and things that they enjoy and shit. Let's fucking go. <laughs> I'm gonna lure these bitches. Uh, details will have to wait until after the post-experimental analysis. For now, Kale and I are going to buy some reagents for our experiment. All right, well, uh... <laughs> See you later. Okay, see ya! Bye-bye. <laughs> Poor Layla. <laughs> she didn't ask to be here. Like, everybody else has some reason for being here. Whether we know it directly or particularly in Riku's case, not. But Layla was just like, she just got signed up for this shit. She didn't. <laughs> she's just, she's just of the mind of, well, I'm here. I'm gonna try. <laughs> I love her for it. Hey, Layla. Hmm? You look a little worried. Do we just always have that camera positioned directly behind us in the middle? Is that just gonna be the rest of this fucking event now? <laughs> yeah... I have no idea what I should do. What color are these swift flies? Do they have special markings? How do they differ from ordinary butterflies? Oh, I can't even figure out these basic questions and most of what I've learned in the past is completely useless here. He's just fucking- Aren't people who research the star supposed to have some extraordinary abilities? Why not use astrology to solve it? Oh, look at him, he's being helpful! Oh, you're another contestant. That hat guy, was it? Look at him go! Is it that you can't use astrology during the day? <laughs> Guess that skill's less useful than I thought. No, it's not like that. If it's daytime, all I need is an astrolabe. So, why don't you do that, then? Uh, Mona Magistus, the astrologist, said that those who constantly use astrology to obtain things that shouldn't be theirs will eventually lose the blessing from the stars. Interesting. It's also nice to know that, like, the two astrology people at least know of each other. <laughs> Um, it's just something I read in an academic publication. Uh, I really love to read Mona's essays. Yeah, Riku, you met Mona once. All the way back in fucking 1.1. 1 .1. You tried to murder us and she just went up and teleported and then you told us the fucking sky was a lie and then you fucked off for a year. Good times. Good. Good times. You're overthinking it. Power is just a tool. It just seems to me that you don't have the resolve to win this. Well, suit yourself. <sighs> Wallow in your immature ideals if you like. And there he goes. Hey! Seriously? Just walking off after saying a bunch of mean stuff like that? Uh, um. Did I say something wrong just now? No, that's just how he is. Uh, thank you so much. I've made up my mind not to use astrology for this. I think I'll just try my luck in the city. Uh, to be honest, I've always been pretty good at observation, and if I'm fortunate, I might be able to find that special butterfly species. You fucking go, Layla. 
Lord Sino seems to have found a swift fly. Come on, let's go check it out. Oh, that I told you, efficient. Really? Where? The butterfly flew up high, and he's chasing it now. What a legend! There's a dog that wants in. Better y'all get hold up. Okay. You gonna make yourselves comfortable? Foolish creatures. Oh, no time to lose. Let's go see. Ah, as expected of Sino. Ah, actually, shouldn't you two go have a look as well? The moment when he catches the butterfly will likely be one worth recording, after all. Better question, why do I have to be the one to record this? There are three commentators. Me? Te technically, Paimon? It's like a joint at the hip thing, die. But there, there's us, there's all hate them, and there's Nilu. The two of them are just fucking sitting there, off screen, and they're probably just gonna be there the whole time. Why do I gotta be the? I'm the fucking guest commentator, and I gotta be the one who hauls this fucking camera everywhere. <laughs> also. The commentator's usually not the one who has the camera. They're usually the one who's looking at the footage being taken. And then commentating on top of that. Someone else usually has... Okay. Excuse me, ma'am. It... Are you having fun over there? Alright. Pup had to dig herself a nice comfy little spot. Ooh, I'll head into the city shortly to start my own search. I'll see you later. Alright. In that case, let's go see Sino first. And then we can check on what everyone else is up to. I'm going to try my luck in the city, too. Alright. Can I finally talk to you guys? I didn't expect that you would be invited as well. Neither did we. Uh, by the way, how did you get picked, I'll hate them? And how did you not know that we were the guest commentators? Because you're already one of of the actual commentators, and two, you're the fucking acting grand sage, sir. There were several factors, but primarily the recommendation of the sages. I suppose they assumed that I'd have the free time for this job after resigning as acting grand sage. Okay, never mind. He's not the acting grand sage anymore, but he's still the goddamn scribe, and he was. <laughs> and he was acting grand sage for a time. That said, they'd probably claim that my calm demeanor would help maintain fairness in the competition. Sounds like you've got a lot on your plate. Not really. The job itself is quite simple and effortless. He's just gonna sit there the whole time while I haul this fucking camera everywhere. <laughs> you son of a bitch. This is my first time commentating for such a competition. I'm feeling kind of nervous. Nilu, how did you get picked to be a guest commentator? The staff said that spectators would be less inclined to come if the contestants and commentators were all from the academia. I don't quite understand it, but I'm happy that we're able to all meet again. Finally, somebody from the fucking arts in this bitch. <laughs> Someone I can understand. I- oh my goodness 
Christ on a bike. It really does show me where everybody is. Do I... Do I have to go see Sino first? Can I go talk to other people? <laughs> I'm... Hello? Ah, good. We've got all our ingredients. Next, could I trouble you to help me mix them together? <laughs> of course, Master. I really can just go talk to literally everybody else. Okay. I gotta zoom in on this map so much. <laughs> hey! They're over Too here! Slow. What's good? <sighs> what a crowd. Seems the Academia Extravaganza is in full swing. What do you want to get? He's by the special chair! Oh my god! Hmm. Maybe we can buy some gifts to bring back. Now? Huh. I usually get gifts last. Let's go walk around somewhere else first. They're just here. I love it. This is the special chair! It actually is. It makes me cry. Anyway. Hello! Let me find a good place to... He's just thinking. Alright. Um... What's over here? Thing. Squall and Fury! Yep, yeah, there they are. Are you sure it's alright to release so many? What the fuck are you two doing? <laughs> have some faith. It'll be fine. I have a feeling it will not be fine. Um, is he above me or open the map to views? Fuck it, he's above me. Okay. There's a there's a thing here. I have a hard time navigating this place. Too many, uh, twirly ramps. It's fine. Wind rises. Fly up here. Joke's on you. I've got the bitch that can fly. <laughs> we found you, Sino. Oh, wait. Is that a swift fly? Ooh, it's pretty. It's got like a fucking cog in its back. Stay put. Don't move. Uh, he caught it. Huh? Sino, what's wrong? This isn't what I'm looking for. It's a. <sighs> Finally, I made it. I heard that you caught a swift fly, Sino. Mind letting me see what it looks like? Uh, hold on. Isn't this the mechanical bait that I released earlier? Why would you catch that instead of a swift fly? Wait a minute. If we consider this from a different angle, isn't it a good thing that the bait you made was convincing enough to fool even Sino? Oh, you fools. You absolute buffoons. You released bait! That's right. During a previous interior design project, I felt that the artificial flowers on a wall were a little bland, so I decided on placing a few moving mechanical butterflies to add some pizzazz. Alright, that's attention to detail, Kave. I appreciate that. You, I'll give you a pass on that. In order to make them both small and nimble, I consulted with Madame Faruzan. Not long ago, the two of us took all those mechanical butterflies and released them into the city. Why would you do that? <laughs> need you even ask? Young people these days really do need to get out more. I feel like she's calling me out and I don't like it. Have you never played that game where you play strips of paper on a bamboo pole and wave it across a field of flowers to attract a whole kaleidoscope of butterflies? No. No, I have not. What is- what? <laughs> All I ever do is open the front door and there's like fucking 20 dragonflies though. Does that count? No, I haven't. Wait, so you're trying to... That's right. The butterflies within the city will mistake our mechanical bait for one of their own and follow them around. 
As long as we keep releasing and retrieving our bait, we can capture all the butterflies within the city. What comes afterward is just a matter of separating the swift flies from the others. Huh. Guess that's one way to do it. Are there... Did we ever get to actually hear what, like, the rules were for this game? Like, what you... What are the limitations of what you can and cannot do? Because I have no fucking clue. <laughs> do not underestimate the wisdom of your elders. I had already thought of this method the moment the round's rules were announced. Of course, we also owe much to this fine junior of mine here for making such lifelike butterflies. It seems that Kasharwar has not quite declined as far as I had thought in recent years. Their teaching skills at least seem to be intact. That's why I had a cog in the back, because it wasn't fucking real. Okay. Well, I just stuck to what I do best. The idea was yours. Ah, no need to be so polite. Once we capture all these butterflies, we shall split the points for this round. Well, one of you is gonna get three and the other one's gonna get two, so... Decide that amongst yourselves. Ah, look! One of them is returning now. Huh? Wait a moment. Are my eyes deceiving me? Why don't I see any butterflies behind it? That's because there are none. Seems like your plan has hit a snag. Looks like the match continues. I'll be looking elsewhere. Huh. Strange. Has something else diverted their attention? Come, let's search in the direction the bait returned from. We'll go have a look too. I wonder if it was Tanari's, um, concoction that, like, Oh god! Quit following oh, we're me. oh, we're running with him! <laughs> hey! Let's get <sighs> too far on your floating! <laughs> Wait, I'm faster than you guys. Hold on. I think we actually are gonna go to where Tanari was. Oh, Layla's here! She she's over there! Um, guys, get, uh, okay, I'll, I'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah, this is Tanari's bait trap. Look at him go. Huh? Frozen? Kame? Why did you two stop? Because Tanari had a good plan, that's why. Ah. <sighs> So it was the Morta boy. Oh, we're lost, Kava. <laughs> Tainari! Fascinating, isn't it? The butterflies have all congregated here due to a special incense that I used. I infused it with three different types of honey, and the butterflies, following the fragrance, have gathered around me. Oh, butterflies must have really sharp noses then. <sighs> Wait, do they even have noses? <sighs> I've never seen one. They do not, in fact, and their vision isn't stellar either. But they have phenomenal other senses. However, they can use their antennae to distinguish between scents, and their olfactory senses are generally quite advanced, allowing them to detect floral fragrances from great distances. We really do have to lug that fucking camera everywhere. <laughs> oh, so that's how it is. <sighs> I had a pet butterfly once. I picked wildflowers and placed them in its box, but it wouldn't eat any. That's normal. Raising butterflies isn't difficult, but there are many things you should take note of. He's just out here giving a fucking lesson. Like, all the butterflies are, are here with him. He can just, like, look at any of them and be like, hmm, alright, time to analyze which one's a swift fly. And he's just like, ooh, this kid wants to know about butterflies and shit. Time to give a lecture. Let's go. Appropriate temperature, sufficient air, and a spacious environment are examples of such considerations. You must also ensure that the food you've chosen suits their palate. Oh no. Now he's got the weed whacker. Ah! Yeah, that's right, creatures. There's a weed whacker out there. What the fuck is that noise? That looks so confused. 
Most importantly, you must curb your curiosity and avoid disturbing them while they rest. Otherwise, they may become stressed. Uh, sorry. I liked to poke at its wings at the time. <laughs> what? What? No! You don't do that. Uh, humans tend to rear many creatures due to their aesthetic value, but not all are suited to such a process. Where'd Kava go? Caring for living beings is hard work. Impulse alone is insufficient. Some prerequisite knowledge is always required. Yeah, that's right. You hear that, girls? I had to get prerequisite knowledge before both of you. And we did. Why are you looking at me like that? One of the dogs is just like, I don't give a shit. She's just clonked out. The other one's staring at me with this face of like, what the fuck does prerequisite knowledge mean? Now you're itchy. Now you don't care. Okay. You sure do know a lot. Uh, I have a question too. I bought a scarab not long ago and it hasn't seemed very active. Can you help me figure out why? I'd like to keep a dust bird as a pet. What are some key points I should consider? Bitches, do y'all own research. My god. Do none of these people know that you actually have to figure out what your pet needs? As care before you actually get the yes I know I know the weed whacker is scary it makes big noise I know you're just sweet little creatures you don't understand <laughs> They did a simultaneous full body shake. Oh, now you steal her spot? Why are you so itchy? Creech. Um, is it possible to keep a Rishbulin tiger as a pet? No. Alright, <laughs> it seems like you all have a great deal of questions. <laughs> But I am in the middle of the Interdarshan Championship at the moment, so I'm afraid I can't answer them all now. Let me propose an alternative. Next month, there will be a biology lecture at Gendarvaville, and I will be sharing some interesting insights on living organisms there. If you're interested, you can attend that lecture, and if you should have any questions, just prepare them ahead of time. I'll answer questions after I finish speaking. There he is. He did it. Promote that lecture. Uh, all right, I'll be there. Eek. Yeah, you, you're it. Put that leg down. But no, it, it, it. <laughs> she's so itchy, and she just you just see her slowly lifting up her back leg to try and start scratching. Eek. 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 Yeah, that's right. Baby fool. I love you, but you're itchy. You're so itchy. She loves grass, but she's slightly allergic to grass. <laughs> you're a dingus. Of course, please try to ask more rational questions for example whether you can raise a rishbalin tiger as a pet or not is mainly dependent on whether you can overcome one in a fight looks like tainari's science lecture will draw quite a crowd huh? oh <clears throat> was i listening in for that long <laughs> seems kale's master does live up to his title as a teacher madam farozan i've had a look around Nearly all the butterflies in this area have been attracted by the incense. However, we can cast our bait further away to avoid this area. All right, then let's get moving. We shan't let all the butterflies get away from us if we can help it. 
Seems like the competition's really heating up. Let's go see how the other contestants are doing. What? <laughs> Look at this heckin' crowd. Hmm. The scent is starting to fade. Seems the wind is stronger than I thought. The incense isn't going to last long. Better uh, count your butterflies then. Layla is in this direction. Sino is up there. Or she was over here. She moved! Damn. Uh, Sino is over there. Let's go see how he's doing. I. No, just give me a. Is he above me? Is he below me? We're, 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 we're going in here. So we can go over the building. Behold. Uh, and he's probably down here. Yep. Okay. Hey, look at that. This is taking longer than I thought. <laughs> Um, all right, these two are still over here. Please lead the swift flies back here. I'm really counting on you. Look, the man just wants to buy a house. I, I I, I feel Kava on a level, honestly. He just he just wants to survive. Let's wait here. Whew. Seems my age is catching up with me. He's up here. He's just fucking chilling. What brings you two here? <laughs> I'm checking up on everybody, but you're just fucking chill. You know what? Mood. Huh? You're here having coffee? Uh, aren't you supposed to be a contestant? Is there really any need for me to take part while everyone's running around like it's some sort of carnival? Don't worry. I'll get involved once things actually get serious. Fair enough. You do you. Uh, she is over here. We're just talking to everybody. Where is she's below me, isn't she? Uh, is she another level down? Yep. This is why I can never find anything in this fucking city. All right, how you doing? Uh, I've been searching for quite a while now, but I haven't seen any sign of the swift flies yet. Instead, I ended up catching a few mechanical devices that looked very similar to butterflies. Uh, I wonder where they came from. <laughs> Farazan and Kava are just fucking it up for everybody. Uh, looks like Farazan and Kave's devices are everywhere now. I'll keep up the search. That said, I've noticed that a number of butterflies in the city has already decreased a lot compared to when the event started. Probably because the other contestants are coming up with their own ways to catch butterflies. Uh, Alright, I'll do my best too. Uh, huh? What's this? <gasps> a real one? Oh, what a coincidence. I guess I just need to catch it now, right? Real shit. Oh, um, please wait. Ah, oh, there it goes. Aw. It's so fast. Paimon thought all hate them said they were only a little fast yet. Uh, uh, excuse me, ma'ams. 
Is it time for war? Baby fools. They are called swift flies. No, come back. Oh, Layla. Come on, traveler. Let's go too. Oh god, there I got chase again. The locator's going off. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh Looks Lord. Like someone's already cut themselves a swift fly. Wait. Hold Do I catch it? Do you catch who who catches the shit? Oh, wait. Violet. You you got this. The locator's going off again. So someone else finished too? That would mean that the one Layla's chasing is the last swift fly. I'm gonna laugh if it ends up like going right in front of fucking Riku. <laughs> and then he's and then he just grabs it like that and is like, alright, guess I won. <laughs> nope, wrong direction. Oh, it just occurred to me that we should also get you a makeup box. I was gonna- that would have been hilarious though if that was the case. Like he's just sitting there sipping his fucking thing and the thing just lands in front of me and just yoinked it. That would have been funny. <laughs> no, it's fine. I, I don't think I'll end up using it. What a mood, Candace. Maybe you won't, but it doesn't hurt to have one, right? It doesn't hurt to have one until, you know, it starts sitting there for like fucking five years. I speak from experience. I don't use fucking makeup. <laughs> Come on, just trust me on this one. Huh? Uh, who are you, and what do you want? Dear, you got a swift fly on ya. Uh, please, don't move. Don't move? Who sent you? Dear. Don't worry, I can handle this. Now, tell me, what do you want? <laughs> I believe she's looking for this. Here, take it. Thank you, Candace. <laughs> a, a butterfly? Was it on my head? Yeah. You're wearing a little flower pin. I probably thought it was a flower. Oh, you're... It's been a while, Layla. A friend of yours? Oh, so she must be the one you were telling me about. Huh? You two know each other? Oh yeah, it has been some time. The first time I ever woke up after sleepwalking, I somehow found myself in Aru Village. Uh, Candace was the one who took care of me then. That's right. She didn't look well, so I gave her something to eat. She said a lot of complicated things about astrology, the night sky, the stars. Not sure I understood it all, but it sounded pretty enchanting. Candace is just fucking nice. What a legend. Right. Do you still want this butterfly? I it seems like you were chasing it all the way here. Are you babies restless? Uh, the puppers, they crave freedom. They, they crave...
puppers have attained freedom. It's of little use to me, but if you don't want it, I can release it. Just let her have it. It's no big deal. The swift fly was flying so fast, but you were able to catch it like it was nothing, Candace. Oh, it didn't seem that quick, really. I was actually worried that I would injure it. But I'm glad that didn't happen. Anyway, sorry about the butterfly thing. With the way you suddenly came running over like that, I thought you were hired to take us out or something. Huh, on second thought, I guess I've never seen an assassin that looks tired with dark bags around their eyes. Oh, you must be taking part in the championship. <laughs> take it from me. Don't let it stop you from getting some rest. Oh, don't worry, Dio. She's always like that. Uh, I'll do what I can. Thank you. Even in rest, she obtains no rest. What a mood. Hmm, we'll be on our way then. See you later. Alrighty, let's bring the swift fly back together with Layla. Uh, can't check up in for anybody else? Okay, yeah. Wind. Wind rises. It seems we have a third contestant who has returned with a swift fly. With that, the first round has come to an end. Ah. Uh. I anticipate that all of you will keep up the effort for the second round. Dismissed. I wonder if, uh... I wonder if their plan actually ended up working. Uh, um, your closing statement sounded so... How do I put it? Decisive? Well, you could certainly stand to try being more decisive, Nilu. It would help you live more freely. Hang on a second. Who were the first two contestants with swift lies? Tainari was first. And as for the second, it's being discussed right now. Ah, okay. Tanari got one because of his luring method. I presume Farzan and Kave found one, but because they're two people, it, it's kind of like who wins. And I and it's probably gonna end up in a debate between like, well, Kave invented them, but it was Farzan's idea to let them go, and blah blah blah. Um, and then Layla just found one, so. Hey, I'll hate them. I think I've come up with a good idea. <laughs> Second place gets two points, right? Can't Madame Faruzan and I split the points between us? Quite the imagination you have there. I've read the championship handbook from cover to cover, and I never saw any rule which permits that. But did you ever see a rule that was against it? I, I'm... Because if not, loophole... Then we can just add a rule. <laughs> do you really think I'd do that? Look, Kava is trying very hard. Oh, come on, you're not going to stand in the way of my victory, are you? Well, you're free to send the organizing committee an application outlining your naive proposal. They'll get back to you within three working days. <laughs> Three working days? It'll be too late by then. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, even dreaming is gonna cost you. Damn, I'll hate them. No mercy. Ah, Paimon gets it now. Kaveh and Farazan found the second swift fly together, but the rules say that only one person can get the points. <sighs> oh well, the rules are the rules. Since you call me madam and politely ask for my help, I shall give you these points. So I'll put the points under Kaveh's name then? No. If I take these points, won't that only detract from your contributions, Madam Faruzan? <sighs> he... God damn it, Kave, you've got so much at stake. And yet he's also like, oh, but if I take the points, what about your contrib- Bitch! You got no money! <laughs> She's just like, hmm, I'd like some extra research funding. And this bitch is like, I am legitimately broke. I had nowhere else to go. 
he he has to room with all Haytham because he legitimately had no other choice. Like, Kava, you know what's at stake. Just take the fucking points. <laughs> you might be all right with that, but I cannot do it. Not in good conscience. God, d Kava, just be fucking selfish. I don't have any problem with it. There are two more rounds after all. Losing one isn't a major setback. God, this is two people who are too polite going back and forth. But if you insist, I have another method. We can draw lots to see who will receive the points. Alright, at least that's fair, but Jesus Christ. L lots, huh? What? Is there something wrong with that idea? Uh, no, well, let's do it. Alright, I'll get the paper needed for the lots. Give me a moment. He just has bad luck with the lots, I guess. <laughs> oh, seriously? <laughs> I'm sorry, but it appears that luck was on my side this time. Yeah, like I said, bad luck with the lots. <laughs> no, you do deserve it. I'm just lamenting my bad luck. Perhaps... Oh, perhaps that's why my life is rife with troubles. <laughs> Indeed. It's rare to see anyone with such terrible luck be so willing to decide victory via lots. Oh, Hatham, now you're just rubbing it in his face. And what would you know about that? I just... Uh, we can save bickering for later. Record the points under Farazan, and that'll finally bring the first round to a close. The second round will be held in the desert. We'll be moving our commentator stand over to Aru Village. So a whole one table and two chairs. <laughs> Let's meet up in Aru Village once everything is ready. I'll announce the details of the second round then. Till then, you have some free time. I'm off the clock at this point, so it's farewell for now. Wait, I'll hate them! You... <sighs> Kava's... Uh, he's gonna have a time. Don't be upset, Kave. Sighing can carry away your good luck, you know. <laughs> you get- you have bad luck, so you sigh, and then it takes more of your good luck? <laughs> wow, that's terrible. Oh, so that's how it works. In that case, I'll take in some deep breaths. Maybe that'll help me make up for all the luck I've lost? I don't think so. <sighs> it's really no big deal. Two points aren't enough to decide victory or defeat just yet. Well, if there's three rounds, and each point gives three, two, and one points... And there's six dash. I'm not gonna do the math. I'll win the next round, you'll see. Looks like you've managed to pick yourself back up, young man. Good. I must warn you, though, that I'm quite familiar with the desert. You'll have to try your best if you don't want to lose. I'm no stranger to the desert either. I'll be fine. All right, then. That's enough chit-chat for now. I'm going to check the area out. And off he goes. So the current standings are Kainari in first place, Farazan in second, and Layla in third. Oh, guess we should also take a nice break before the next round starts. But where should we go first? Why, you two look a little lost. If you're not sure where to start enjoying the Academia Extravaganza, then may I suggest that you have a chat with our boss? May I suggest introducing yourself before you start barging into a conversation? Your boss? Who's that? Do we know them? <laughs> well, only the most famous merchant in all of Sumeru, Lord Sangama Bay. Ah. Dory. Oh, you mean Dory! Precisely. Our boss sent me to inform you two that she'll be waiting for you at Sumeru City's North Gate. Goddamn. Literally everybody is here. We're only missing Nahida. <laughs> at this point. Uh, oh no, everybody left. Well, guess I'm alone again. Alright. Uh, at the north gate. Do not presume that I know directions. Aha! 
Oh, well, if it isn't the Traveler and Paimon. Hi, Dory. Hey, Dory. Are you here to attend the Academia Extravaganza Q? No, she's here to get money. I don't... Dory's one of the characters I don't really have an opinion on. She's shown up, like, maybe three times. And it's just like, hey, I have this thing you need. Give me money for it, and then we give her money for it, and then we get the thing, and then we leave. So I, I, don't, I just don't have an opinion. Of course. People are practically flocking to Samara City. You couldn't ask for a better opportunity to do business. This is one of the entrances into the city, and it's very close to the Wisdom Gala booths. There'll be an endless stream of customers. <laughs> I can already hear the Mora going clink, clink, clink as they fill my corn pouch. At least she's having a good time. Well, is there anything you'd like to purchase? We've got everything you need and deals that can't be beat. Well, do you have anything to eat? Wait, we're celebrating the extravaganza and you're only thinking of eating. <clears throat> I mean, of course, we've got lots of things to eat. That said, I recommend that you also consider some of the great bargains we have going on. Dory, if you just called me over here to buy shit from you... I will have you know I have the majority of the things that I need. <laughs> Unless you've got some fucking weekly boss drops on you. Probably not interested. The Wisdom Gala is about to begin, and once it starts, each of the Darshans will prepare a small challenge for everyone. And just between us, I have some super booster supplements for sale. Eat just one to boost both your strength and dexterity for a short time, allowing you to overcome any challenge. Don't need it. Uh, no thanks, we'll pass. These little challenges are gonna be a cinch for the two of us. Just you watch. Anyway, Paimon just wants something to eat, please. If you don't have any food, then we'll just go somewhere else. All right, all right. Mora is Mora, after all. Oh, what would you like to eat? Hmm, well, Paimon's pretty hungry right now. Uh, do you have any patching? Let me see. This is a huge job, isn't it? Ooh. Been here for two seconds and shit's going down. If this works out, we'll be set. Doggo! Doggo in the corner! Bye, Doggo! Here you go! Two servings of Tachin! See? I told you there's nothing Lord Sangama Bay can't procure! Yay! Uh, huh? What are you looking at, Traveler? Possible plotting. Oh? Who? Someone we know? Was it someone suspicious? Have we attracted some unwanted attention? Huh? What's happening, Dory? Is there something else going on? Paimon, she deals in illegal shit. <laughs> what do you expect? I don't know who you saw just now, but I do have some hard-to-come-by information about the extravaganza. If you want to know more, we can talk business later. Hey, Act One. Oh, there it is. Oh! <laughs> oh, this is a fun. This is a fun one. Okay. Um. Think this brain. That one's far gone. Okay. I'm just- there's all the quests. My- my brain doesn't remember what- This one gives you a thing, though. Interesting. 
Gotta talk to Dory again anyway. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, it's not voice acted anymore. God damn it. Have you decided to buy information from me? Hmm. Paimon's a little curious about your exclusive information. But we need to hear the price first. If it's too expensive, then forget it. I'll sell it to you for the fixed price of one million more. To be fair, I can afford it. <laughs> one million more, I can buy lots and lots of food. Paimon. Paimon's customer number is 1001 for today. The original cost of the information was one million more, but I'll now... <laughs> But for now, the price is now free. Uh... Oh my god, Dory. Just tell me. Do you remember thy, the, the diadem of knowledge? Um, that's the crown. Okay. The diadem that Sachin gave the Academia was a rather expensive antique. Yet the very diadem, after it was donated to the Academia, was lost by them once before. Oh. If everyone knew about this, how would the information be exclusive? Okay, fair enough. You've got a witness! A young fellow named Kashmir from the suburbs. If you're interested in delving further, you could ask him. Password is that incident from 20 years ago. Okay. I'm gonna talk to a man about an incident. Oh, wait, it's giving me a thousand quests. Hold on. Um... I'm not gonna lie. I'm not reading. I presume that's a thing for later. Okay, still getting quests. Who do I talk to about- just tell me where to go! Christ's sake. You! Sir with the glowing light of the heavens upon him. <laughs> Tell me this shit. Eh, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's about that incident from 20 years ago. Guess I shouldn't have told anyone. Last time I had too much to drink and blathered a little too much and now people are seeking me out. I was just six... I was just six year old 20 years ago, so I can't remember clearly what happened at the time. But recently, I read the diary I kept when I was a child and vaguely recalled the situation back then. The Inter-Darshan Championship was also held that year. There were three rounds, the last of which was outside the city. I begged my mom to take me out of town to see it, and when she refused, I snuck out. I ended up getting lost outside the city. In the middle of nowhere, there was no one around. I grew more and more frightened and began to cry. That's when I saw some strange creatures. I can't remember what they looked like. I only remember how, as a child, I'd stopped crying at the sight of them. May have been the Aranara. There you go. They took me to the competition. Unfortunately, by the time we got there, it was too late. It was already over. Just when I was disheartened, I suddenly saw one of those strange creatures slowly dragging a crown along. It was a beautiful crown, stunning, shining in the moonlight, and I could not help but follow it. I saw the little fellow hide the crown in a hollow tree before disappearing. 
I wanted to touch that crown, but at the moment I could hear the distant cries of my mother. It turns out she figured out I was lost and got her neighbors to go looking for me. I never got to touch it. It wasn't until I was older when I saw the addendum of knowledge at the Interdarshan Championship that I realized it was the same thing. So where did it end up? Probably in the NVIDIA forest. But I've been back a few times and haven't found anything. No one would believe me, even if I told them. Alas, even I can't remember it clearly, because it was a dream I had when I was a child. Okay, yeah, so we gotta go see the R&R. &R. We're gonna go see... Uh, or we're gonna go in this direction instead. I guess. Give. Swan Fury. Ah, hell yes, since it is. Yeah, no, they. D I don't know, they look smaller. Maybe it's because of when they're on the tree, but when they're on the ground, I guess, I don't know. It threw me off in that in that quest. It really did. Too slow. Greetings. There's a hole in the tree. It seems completely empty and there's nothing in it. But there is a note. The good Nara ta Arakas Yapa I are not our names again, no Ta Arakas Yapa how to read. Arakas Yapa what must protect the Gunara. Okay. So they found a per- so the r, r interacted with a person, we know that much. Uh, I have to go back to Dory! Yeah, god damn it. Dory! Latest update. Oh, cool. Free? I love things for the good old price of free. You guys remember Sachin? The guy who sponsored the event? Yep. Not long ago, when I was doing business in the desert, I met an old businessman. And guess what I got from him? A dealer's ledger. With it, I can avoid dangerous areas in the desert and go to more places. Of course, the more important thing is that the ledger mentions Sachin. It turns out that Sachin has been to the desert to investigate the people's local traditions and customs. He also had cordial exchanges with the traveling merchants in the desert. Much of the text is lost, but this is a first-hand account of the big sponsor behind the Academia Extravaganza. Would you like a look? Okay. The sandstorms are raging. The caravan has stalled. We ran into a scholar calling himself Sachin. He he said he could sponsor the caravan, provided that we... This is a trial of human nature. Betrayal. Plunder. There was nothing we could do. No one could withstand... If I could do it all over again, I would never have taken that money. Then they wouldn't have to die like... Then they wouldn't have had to die. And I wouldn't be living like this. A fate worse than death. People are the most terrifying animals in this world. I mean, you're not wrong. I'm afraid that if you need to analyze, it's gonna cost you an extra million mora. There it is. There should be someone here who's been to a lot of academia extravaganzas. Perhaps you could talk to them. Fine.
find someone at the venue. Where the fuck is the venue? Oh yeah, we're in the desert now. To the desert! Ne next part, let's go, let's go. Is there a bridge? Yes. Do I care? No. Greetings, sir. The Interdarshan Championship has always been a stage for young talent. Unfortunately, not every genius will be successful eventually. Why do you say that? Geniuses are mostly stubborn and cold and find it hard to understand the pain of others. Empathetic people, on the other hand, often fall into self-doubt and depression. Sir, you're calling out so many people's lives right now. People who are not firm can only stand still, while people who are determined but walk down the wrong path refuse to look back. There's a lot to think about here. Apparently that was pertinent information! I would just so more take that as life advice, but, uh, you know, as you will. <laughs> For this year's Interdarshan Championship, my favorite has to be Sina. <laughs> Well, my favorite is Don Sombrero, so what are you gonna do? <laughs> Aside from his skills with the General Mahamatra, looking back at the tournament's history, the Spantumat Darshan has the highest percentage of champions. Many people say that the Spantumat Darshan in produces many talented people, such as Cyrus, Ru Ru <laughs> a name that is triggering my dyslexia, Lisa, and Sino. The brighter the talent, the sooner the game will lose its suspense. The most exciting competition was still 20 years ago. At the time, my friend also participated in the game, and I went there to cheer for him. The last round was played in NVIDIA Forest. In the end, no one dared to approach them, and no one knew what was going on in the depths of the forest. Then, I heard the Academia shut down the competition. Later, the Interdarshan competition removed many of the events in which people fought to the death, <laughs> discouraging people from being desperate enough to do so. I'm sorry, that was only implemented 20 years ago? <laughs> you would have thought they'd put that in a little sooner. Christ on the bike. Yeah, uh, you know, maybe we should remove that part about battling to the death. Yeah. Just maybe. <laughs> Let me think. He's honest and kind, but he's also vulnerable and sensitive. Most of all, he cares about us. When we drink together, our time is filled with laughter and cheer. It's just too bad that it's all in the past now. Among the friends we drank with, some died, some disappeared, some now live in seclusion. They say fate is fickle. Perhaps that's true. Yeah, so something happened 20 years ago. Woo! I gotta go talk to another bitch. I sw No. I swear to God, where am I going? God damn it. I gotta murder somebody. <laughs> Making me go back and forth. I love Sumeru, but I do not know how to navigate this bitch. Okay, hold on. He's under the... Under here. Um... I'm, I'm, I'm gonna figure it out. You, you just... You, hold on a minute. Is it, like, in here? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, this guy. Okay. 
the incident from 20 years ago. Why the sudden question? Did you hear any particular information? Well, I learned about fighting to the death. The diadem seems to have been lost 20 years ago, and some contestant's personality has changed. I was five years old when it happened, how could I know? But there are things I've never told anyone. I'm actually a part of the Academia Extravaganza's planning committee because of the influence of a senior colleague. That senior colleague I met on a trip. He was a bit timid and would always flee and cower somewhere at the first sign of an emergency. One day, four years ago, I said to him, I want to go back to the Academia. The Academia Extravaganza is about to begin. And then? Upon mentioning the Academia Extravaganza, he got startled and said something about it has nothing to do with me. When I said goodbye to him, he insisted on getting a drink with me. After several drinks, he started talking all sorts of nonsense. I also had too many, and in my drunken stupor, I didn't really hear him that well. I only remember that he said that he lost the diadem of knowledge for a while. He was in charge of the distribution and recovery of the diadem of knowledge, and that he nearly had a heart attack upon realizing that the diadem was missing. Fortunately, he finally found it in a tree hole. He said that the Diadem of Knowledge is a very valuable treasure, which is recorded in many ancient books. Legend has it that it was built by a famous craftsman in ancient times and carries a secret that no one knows. Sachin had entrusted the Academia to safeguard the Diadem, after all. If my senior was responsible for the Diadem's disappearance, he could not afford to pay for her with his meager wealth. Even if the loss was temporary, no one should know of it, lest the Academia find him guilty of gross negligence. Yeah, it's cover-up. What the fuck do you want? It's either go broke or go to jail. Not, neither one's good. It seems that he also said that many people came to inquire about it including children, but he said that the diadem had never been lost. But he was so scared that when things blew over, he quit his job and left the academia. I drank too much that night, and when I woke up the next day, he was gone. The more I thought about it, the more I had a feeling that issues would crop up in the academia extravaganza if entrusted to someone like him. I didn't have a job at the time, so I joined the academia extravaganza planning committee. I tried to investigate things on the inside, too, but I couldn't find anything. And the diadem was found, and the man whose personality was said to have changed was dead. There was nothing to be found. Still, 20 years is a long time. Long enough that the people involved from the beginning no longer remember nor care. That's all I know. If you're curious, keep investigating, and maybe one day you'll discover the truth. We just out here like, fuck if I know. Later, I also went to the desert to look for him, but in the vast desert, it was almost impossible to run into him. To make up for it, I do have some information on Sachin. Would you like to hear it? When I was traveling, I did so with an Aramite commander. While we were chatting, he said he came into possession of an article written by an academia researcher. He seemed to think it was something precious and refused to show it to anyone, only to let me peek at it at my request. I only caught a glimpse of it, but I saw that it was signed by Sachin. I didn't know who Sachin was, nor did I care. After joining the Academia Extravaganza Planning Committee, I found out that he was an important member of the Valhumana Darshan who sponsored the event. If you're interested, you can find the heir of my commander in the desert. He's usually in the Valley of... Da, da he, I, I can't pronounce shit. Oh boy, back to the fucking desert. We go, get around the fountain. Uh, back to the desert. Jesus Christ.
We really do be going back and forth. All right. He's literally right here. How convenient. What do you want? <laughs> he just asked what we wanted, Paimon. Relax. Actually, we heard that you have Sachin's article on you, so we were wondering if we could have a look. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Seems like you guys really don't know. Some time ago, I had the article appraised. Turns out, it's nothing more than a personal travel journal, and it's of little value. He hired my father to keep him safe. That Sachin fellow would often walk, ask, write, and mumble. There was one time his papers were blown away by the wind. He said that it was no big deal. My father, however, thought that things written by intellectuals must be valuable, so he looked around for them at night with a torch. None of my family can read. My father cherished this article and then passed it on to me. I had no idea it was completely worthless. You can look at it as much as you want. Since it's not worth anything, there's no need for me to be so stingy. Ah, oh, god, writing! Once the gods reigned supreme, all life flocked to them like sheep seeking shepherds, and those who suffered did so in silence. Now, divine power has dwindled while human wisdom has blossomed. However, those who suffer face suffering still. There is a saying in Liwe that goes, life is like lodging at an inn. And in Inazuma, all things are but void. It hurts every time I read these words. I tried to seek the reason for this. The wheel of time turns and the only constant throughout Sumeru's history is human nature. Since arriving in the desert, I have conducted a total of 64 experiments over the course of seven years. Men are like prisoners or captured animals, feeding on each other's happiness until one is doomed to eternal torment. Therefore, where there is gain, there must be loss. Where there is happiness, there is agony. Everyone is a victim, but everyone is also a perpetrator. Greed and numbness reside in the heart of humanity. Driven by greed, humans choose to commit evil. And numbness is why they turn a blind eye to the evil of others. But if this is what the world is, what is, then, the meaning of the world? The future is to the present as the present is to the past. Peace was never an option. Conflict is the eternal truth. Everything, from my knowledge, my wisdom, to my life, is but nothingness. I'm so glad Sachin had a wonderful outlook on life. Real, real class act, this guy. <laughs> the, cr the crummy handwriting! Oh, wow. Uh, it's not worth any money, but I'm going to keep it anyway. After all, my father entrusted it to me. Come see me again if you want to look at it again. Okay. <sighs> I guess I did it. What? Championship. There's Act 2. Okay. It's Part 1. Um, no, not the map. No such thing as that was it. This is all the booths. I need to talk to everybody. This is gonna be a thing I'll probably do on my own. So let me, um... Do the mission, then. So we can get into part two! And then I, what I'm probably gonna do is... Try and get part two here done, and then I'll probably stop and then complete the third part on Friday.
Hey, yo, what's good, y'all? Um, is it me, or are the bags under your eyes even darker than during the last round? Are you alright? She's having a tough time, Kaveh. Uh, thanks for the concern, Kaveh. I just... <sighs> haven't been sleeping well lately. Poor Layla. Even though I try to fall asleep, I can't get the championship out of my head. And before I know it, it's morning again. <sighs> I know the feeling. That happens to me too when I'm agonizing over my blueprints. Do you have any tips for dealing with that? Can you share them with me? To be honest with you, no. You could say there are many things that don't have a quick fix and can only be endured. We're just a circle of sleepless bitches, ain't we? Hmm. I suppose you can think of it as something akin to an illness. Sometimes there's no effective cure, so you just have to let things run their course. I don't know what's stressing you out, but I can feel all the anxiety and pressure coming from you. The next round's about to start, so chin up and do your best. Oh, okay. You do your best, too. Looks like everyone's here. I will now explain the second round to you all. There are three leyline disruptors buried in the area around Aru Village. These devices can imitate the effects of leyline disruption and will constantly interfere with the environment. Your goal is to shut them down. Wait, why did they say everybody's here? We have a whole three people. And I can't even say, oh, it's the people who won last round. Because, like, Kaveh didn't get the points and Tanari won first place. And Sino and Riku are also not here. The first three who manage to finish this task will be awarded four, three, and two points accordingly. Oh, we get more points. Okay. Note that each person may only bring a set amount of food and water with them and that leaving the designated competition zone will result in disqualification. Well, what do you think? Wanna team up again? I shall consider letting you have the points on account of what happened in the previous round. That's all right. I've been here many times, and in any case, machines are one of my specialties. I doubt this will be particularly difficult. It's good to see such confidence in a youngster like yourself. I also happen to be well acquainted with this place. Let's see who will find these devices first. But aside from us, you should remember that there's a favorite for Champion. We must be careful of him. A favorite to win? Who is it? Shh, not so loud. I mean that boy, Tainari. You say that, but we have now placed him in the desert. He is suffering. <laughs> <laughs> he was thriving in the in in the city, but now you've put him in the desert. Now it's all going downhill. He took first place in the previous round, and if he does so again this time, we may as well declare this competition over. Again, don't worry. You're in the desert. He's not gonna win. <laughs> that boy knows a great deal. Perhaps he might yet follow the trail of some desert creature to the devices. <laughs> Sino's just looking at him like you're not gonna you're not gonna survive. Hmm, that's true. It does look like his odds of winning are pretty high. Where's Hat Guy? He already has Kale, who is an excellent pupil. If he were to win this round as well, then wouldn't we just be letting him have all the fun? Okay, but where the fuck did Don Sombrero go? As his senior, it's my solemn duty to prevent such an inequitable arrangement from happening. I'm off. Donde? I'll get going as well. See you later. How are you feeling? He's doing terrible. I think I'm okay. But I'll take things slowly for now. Uh, is this all the water we're getting? Sorry. That's what the rules say. I would not survive on thirst alone. Well, this round seems to be about how quickly you can shut down the devices. It's also testing your ability to survive in tough conditions. 
Like, I'm literally already running out of water again. I've had to get water twice already, and it's only been two and a half hours. Uh, I knew it'd be harder than I had expected. So, we'll either need to find the devices as quickly as possible, or we'll have to save our energy and wait for an opportunity. Uh, okay, I'll head out shortly. Thanks a lot, Nilu. You're welcome. Uh, please, take care of yourself. Well, here goes everybody. Um, excuse me. So, who should we visit this time? Hmm, let Paimon think. Oh uh, yeah, that's everybody missing a whole ass person. Oh, right! Didn't Farozan say that Tainari's the favorite to win? Let's go look for him first. He's going to be dead. He's, he's gonna be face down in the fucking sand. Yeah, again, I asked this last time. Have you seen this man? Because I haven't. Where is he? For fuck's sake. Now that the round's begun, who do you think will win, Alhatham? The ones who find the disruptors will win. I, okay, fair enough. Well, um, yes. But aren't you just repeating the rules? Neelu, that's just how he works. Don't... Like I said, a whole one table and two chairs was moved. God damn- Hey, he's over there! Ah, uh, Tenari's gonna fucking die. Poor guy. Okay, um... <sighs> fucking rock faces. Uh... Okay, we'll start over here. I'll talk to Sino, then we'll go find Layla, then we'll talk to Riku, and then we'll go see uh, Farzan and Kava, and then we'll come back to Tanari. Where is... Is he up? Oh my god, he's up there. <sighs> Too slow. <sighs> Sino! ¿Qué pasando? The sun is especially intense today. I hope Tainari will be all right. <sighs> Probably not. I should go check on him. What did I say? When rises. All right. Layla is over here. The only problem is I have a very hard time determining like where they're standing, like level-wise. So if she would be, like, up here, or further down. Yes, further down. Yeah, she's over here. God damn. Yeah, some treasure hoarders. We don't gotta worry about them. Uh, uh, I, I feel a little faint. Everyone's gonna die at this rate. <laughs> Holy shit. You're killing them. And Rico's just gonna be like, I don't give a shit. No, no, it's just completely unfazed. Oh, look at that. There's a, there's just a ruin guard with some, with some little mushrooms with it. I love that. I guess he's down here. All right, I'm a coming. Ooh, a chest. Getting distracted. What's good? <sighs> this seems more annoying than the last round. That's fine, though. I'll find some place to sit and watch them scurry. Once again, he's just gonna fucking sit and chill. Legend. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna mark. Oh my god, I didn't get that chest either. I did... I did... Those elemental things, but I didn't grab either of these chests. What a dingus. I am a fool. Farzan! How you doing? Hmm. Let me see. Where would they put one of these disruptors? Now, where the higgity heck is Kave level-wise? Is he up there? 
Where is he? Like, he's in he's in this general area. <sighs> Kava, you better just be a. God damn it! There's a quest. Why is there a quest? <laughs> All right. Too slow. Yeah, what's good, Kava? A desert fox? Why would there be desert foxes here? Oh, whoa! Stop biting my clothes. Hey. <laughs> Is this fox? <laughs> it's the beginnings of the Disney princess. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I have a quest. Why do I have a quest? Why is there a chest here? Motherfucker. Quit following me. There's also a thick. I. Oh my god. Why is there just stuff here? Squall and Fury. Search for it. God damn. How am Motherfucker, I what? Alright. Give me huh. the, I have no space. You even want this? Fucking artifact inventory, I swear to god. Ah! I don't have Who needs better artifacts? Probably you. Um I don't know, do I have a better dendro one? The answer is no. Okay, then just, um... Cool, great. Whatever. Alright. Wind rises. I am gonna go over here real quick. Just so I can get this quest. Cause I'm gonna forget about it otherwise. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna read all of this. Yeah, I'm trying to look for my brother. I keep forgetting about that, you know? It, it happens sometimes. I, th okay, th yep, yeah, yep, yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, very interesting. I'm immediately going to ignore this quest. Uh, it's this one. Alright. Talking to Tanari. I'm doing the- I'm doing that stuff now because I know I'm gonna forget later. Whee! Is he just like dead on the floor? He's dying. Huh? Weird. The locator says that he should be around here somewhere. He's like in the corner, just dying. Tainari! Can you hear us? He's dead. <laughs> You're right. Huh? Oh no. It looks like he's fainted. We have to help him. Hey, Paimon. Scream for Sino. Just call him down. Tainari, are you okay? Uh, it's so hot. <sighs> oh, so you passed out because of the heat. Mood. Uh, are you not used to getting around in the desert? No, he is not. Also, as someone who suffers from very easy heat exhaustion, what a fucking mood, Tainari, honestly. Uh, that's right. I usually bring lots of water when I go to the desert, precisely to avoid this situation. I went through all my water very quickly, and with the effects of the disturbed ley lines, I 
started feeling dizzy. My ancestors, the Voluka Shuna, were originally from the desert. But I guess this is what happens when a species migrates. They become intolerant of their original environment. Uh, this isn't the time for a history lesson. Let's get you some water. Humans, such fragile beings. <laughs> Your bodies can't even survive extreme changes in the environment. <laughs> okay. I mean, to be fair, it doesn't affect him at all. Here, take this. Let him drink it. What a legend. See, he's nice. <laughs> when he wants to be. Are you serious? <sighs> this had better be just normal water. Hey! You're leaving already? Paimon, he's not gonna fucking poison him. <sighs> Paimon really doesn't get that guy. What's he up to? Ugh. Anyway, let's focus on helping Tainari drink some water first. Maybe he just didn't want Tainari to fucking pass out. Alright. Again, as someone who understands this from Tanari's situation, what a legend. I'm feeling a little as better now. I sit now. here and sip my own water. Uh, thanks, you two. Oh, it wasn't just the two of us. Just now. Found you at last. Sano! Please, please, please help him. I was concerned, so I came back to check on you. Will you be able to go on? The fur on my tail is so dry, it's practically been singed right off. I don't see any purpose in pushing myself beyond what is reasonable. It appears I'm not suited to this particular round. I should probably just return to Aru Village and rest. Really? So you're backing out? I mean, the other option is pass out in the desert. So, yeah. Yes. I do have my results in the first round to serve as a buffer, so even if I forfeit this round, I still have a chance to turn things around later. Withdrawing now will allow me to conserve my energy. Continuing to push onward would be counterproductive. What a legend. A wise decision. Let's get you back to Aru Village. Uh, it's fine. I can make it back on my own. He's not gonna let you. Oh, stop trying to be so polite. Come on, we'll help you back to Aru Village. It's like, buddy, I've got no stake in this fucking race. Alright, everybody moved. Everybody moved. Well, two people moved. Hold on, I got it. Swarm Fury. Get it. Figure it out. Give me a minute. Everybody be moving around and shit. Quit following me. Behold. Zoom, he is down here. Uh he's, he's around here. He's Hold on. Um no spot directly above me. Am I blind? Is he lower down? Is he lower down? Hello? What? Hold on a minute. Don't. There, I, I, Quit how, me. Do I need to go lower? Like, can't go lower. I'm so confused. Where the fuck did he go? <laughs> Rico, where did you go? What the fuck? Um, that's where I have to go. I don't want to go where I have to. Mm 
where in the fuck am I just blind? I I, I, I swear I'm blind, aren't I? It's literally right. What? Is this what? I've We're in the lower Is he below ground? Like did he go in the fucking hole or something? Like Is this what you're implying to me? Wind rises. Did I just go into the wrong thing? Huh. Where is he? Huh. Too slow. It's at the it's at the lower thing, and I'm like, is he in here now? <laughs> what the fuck? Where is anyone in anything? <laughs> Seriously, where the fuck did he go? You're in our village. You're in the land. No, you're in the th he. What? I'm Where the fuck Quit following me? I have the I literally have the location. There is nothing above. I went below. Theoretically, it it should be right here. Where Am, am I blind? I... I'm so confused. Okay, I guess we're not gonna talk to him again. Let's go see Layla. Well, that's just... I, I wanted to talk to him. Okay, hold on a minute. <laughs> I think... Okay. <laughs> Give me a second. I think, mayhaps... The game has glitched. <laughs> um... Because literally everybody vanished. <laughs> Oh, Christ. Okay, back Quit in. But I don't know if that worked because... Okay, yeah, he's there now. Alright. That was the problem. I had to reload the game. <laughs> I was right. It's just the game broke. You two must have a lot of free time if you came looking for me. Well, to be fair, I always come looking for you. So what do you want? You should expect that at this point. <laughs> Okay, now we go. Or maybe we should go see these guys first, actually. I want to get every interaction. <laughs> Too slow. Hmm. Okay, you're saying the same thing. I'm presuming it's going to be the same for Kava. If I go back over there, I'd probably see Saito and Tanari, but... Let's just do the thing we have to do, because I was looking for Riku for like a whole fucking day. Uh. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. Alright. 
Why is she broke? All right. Okay. Okay. All righty. Well, um, Layla is broken. <laughs> She's supposed to be here, but her model isn't spawning again. Um. Okay. <laughs> you know what? Um. I. It's been three hours. I think I'm gonna end the stream there. Because <laughs> I need to completely reload the game. For, um. To, to do this. So I think what I'll do is I'll stop here. Because I am just getting tired, number one. Um, I'll do a couple of the booths and maybe some other side stuff on my own. And then on Friday, uh, we'll come back and finish up the quest. The event. <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny. That, that's very funny. It broke. <laughs> Oh my god. Alright. Well then I will leave it there. And we'll finish this Friday. This is fun. I love this. I love seeing everybody interact. Oh my god. Alright. Bye y'all. <laughs>